Hey everyone, welcome back to the EPP Park Chip Part 2. In this video we're going to pick up where we left off and we're going to get into uh, covering the plane with the Henry's Weave um, and spray adhesive. So let's get into the build and see how it goes. Okay, in the last video we talked about creating a kind of um, sandwich of the EPP layers, the Henry brand fiberglass coated weave and adhesive, um, basically to make the fuselage stronger. Um, typically, again, we use the Henry brand uh, coated fiberglass. This has a, I believe, 75 pound per square inch tensile strength. And this helps a lot in building these bulletproof planes out of EPP. Um, so I just want to cover this in a little more detail. Uh, I already laid down one layer of the weave between the bottom layer and the main wing portion. Um, now I cut out, I did a real rough cut of the fiberglass weave that I'm going to lay over on the top layer. We're going to use a spray adhesive to glue it down and then I'll glue the top portion of the fuselage on top of that. And after that's all dried out, I'll recut out where the battery slot is on the front. Um, typically we've been using this 3M high strength spray adhesive um, and the Henry Weave. This has been real popular between the people doing combat wings and speed wings. Um, and it definitely makes your planes a lot stronger and a lot more bulletproof as Frank likes to call them. Um, so let me get back down to um, using the spray adhesive, getting this all prepped up and we'll go from there. Oh, and also I'll probably be doing some additional layers of the fiberglass weave along the wing edges, leading edges, and around the areas where it's a little more flexible. This will add a little bit of weight, but it will make this uh, EPP plane a lot more rigid in the areas it needs to be and a lot stronger and a lot more crash resistant. So let me uh, get into laying down the spray adhesive and we'll go from there. Oh, one last thing before I forget too. When you are using the spray adhesive, always make sure you test it out on a small piece of um, foam because sometimes these spray adhesives will eat the foam, uh, especially if you're using some of the softer stuff like blue core or even the white home insulation foam. Um, when you're using those, typically uh, I like to use basically just epoxy or something that is uh, basically good for using with foam. Uh, one last note I forgot to mention, um, you need to make sure you cover your tables and uh, relative area with some sort of sheeted plastic or something to protect your area. Um, when using the spray adhesive because if you do get any overspray on it, it will you know get tacky and sticky and gum everything up. So make sure you protect anything you do not want this uh, spray adhesive to get on um, with plastic or some other sort of cover so it protects it. Okay, I'm going to do a quick layer right on the EPP um, with the spray adhesive and I got kind of an old piece of uh, foam board to use kind of a shield to kind of direct it and keep it where I want it. Um, so let me uh, lay, lay down a quick layer of the spray foam. Then we'll spread it out with a, just a basic cheap epoxy knife. Um, our friend Ken says he actually sometimes uses just um, old playing cards uh, to spread out the uh, adhesive after you spray it. So that might be a good way because it's a quick straight edge that's disposable. You just get an old, piece of, uh, old set of playing cards and uh, spread it out with that. So let me get started. Uh, one thing also, make sure you always have the room ventilated. I opened up all the windows to the basement here so you're uh, not breathing in too much of this um, adhesive. So here we go, let's spray some down. Spray down kind of generously. Then you just spread it out after you got some down. Uh, so this is what's going to be used to make it nice and tacky. Okay, that should be good. Get a little layer on there. Yeah, this stuff's kind of sticky. So. Get a nice layer started on the bottom. Um, the spray adhesive is a lot lighter than using epoxy um, and it actually dries somewhat flexible. So it's a pretty good um, glue to use when doing this uh, fiberglass weave. And you do have a little while before it set, totally sets up. Okay, so I got it on there. Then you spread. glue out, make sure it's nice and flat. And actually, you know, I probably should have used some uh, cheap rubber gloves to protect my hands. 
Now I'm gonna get all sticky now. Okay, got a basic layer on there. I'm gonna put another layer of the adhesive on, and then we'll press the top layer of the fuselage on. fuselage um, nice and rigid where it needs to be uh, but still a little bit flexible to absorb a crash. And again this technique was um, kind of pioneered and used a lot um, with combat wings and uh, speed wings like that. That's where me and my brother discovered it. Because I start to get tacky and dried up really. Let me find the top layer of the fuselage and drag just a little bit more down. Okay. Okay, once you get it all aligned the way you want, you're probably gonna want to stick some sort of weights on top of it. To make sure it's pressed on there good. Okay. okay, we'll let this dry and set up, and then I'll probably get on to adding a little bit of additional of the fiberglass weave around the the uh, wing leading edges and probably around the back of the main wing, where it's going to be a little bit flexible, so that'll rigid it, make it a little more rigid. Okay, while it's drying, I just put a piece of wood with a nice big weight on top. That'll make sure it's compressed and um, all the uh, adhesive evenly spreads out and hopefully glues together nice and uh, snugly. 